Well, folks, it's time to go to where it all began. Where time world. to go back to the Hell House. Not, not the one Castlevania too. No, no, no. Not that poorly translated. Bang. Well, it's actually a decent game, but welcome back to Resident Evil. Or to be more specific, Resident Evil HD Remaster. Our wise Resident, Resident Evil. Evil Rebirth HD. I guess you can say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I say welcome back because obviously this actually, this whole run actually was my first time in full going through uh, HD Remaster actually. And there are, there are some noticeable changes. Well, at least one noticeable change. Control scheme. And for this playthrough, we're going to start off with Jill Valentine. The master of unlocking. The, the penultimate hero of the franchise. Well, well the main female, female the forest protagonist, forest more or less. Situated in Northwest Raccoon City, well, one of them. Where we are searching for hey, look at that! Subtitles! Patriots, Bravo team, oh my god. Let's work for you, then. The yeah. Yes, uh, this game... Yeah, pretty much the original Resident Evil of May 1996, Bizarre remade on the GameCube in 2002, upscaled with HD in 2014. Or, or 2015, won't be technical. Victims mm -hmm. were apparently eaten. Now, people might be wondering, would I rather play this or the original? Well, it's a matter of preference, really. But we lost contact. Yeah, there are multiple things that usually keep people Bravo more endeared to the original and some effect. things more endeared to those who like the the Rebirth version. It's a toss-up. Save for the remaining yeah. body of Kevin. I They got him back for Home Alone 2, didn't they? We continued our search if for they, their members. They should have, really. And it turned into a nightmare. They had no idea what kind of hell awaited them in the years that would follow. Oh yes. Because this Let's is where it see. all this is where it all began. In the summer of nineteen ninety eight. To uh incestual viruses to uh blood that's thrown at people that turns into fire. Um Parasitic and then life form, giant parasitic life forms, and then finally, just pretty much a combination of all that, and still making not much sense. Ah! Ah, down, sorry. down, and down! The dog just wanted to play. And oddly enough, this is actually a, this is actually referenced in Resident Evil Apocalypse. This camera shot, except instead of dogs, it's via zombie children. That's where I draw the line, really. Seriously, zombie children, that's going too far. Uh-oh. Uh. -oh. uh call me crazy, but... I... Uh, come on. what? I don't... Is it just me, or does Jill's chest actually seem bigger in this no, version? No, not really. It's a direct uh, upscaling of the original... Well, remake intro. Anyway, run! Uh, God damn it, Chicken Heart! Should pick, should pick, Brad! Should pick the hell of a tie to bell on us! Oh fuck! Go. Chris, this way. Don't worry, Chris. I got this. Chill the fuck out. I got this. Even though I don't know how the fuck I'm able to see these dogs with sunglasses on, <laughs> I honestly don't know where the fuck I'm going. Can somebody hold my hand? Who cares? Really cool. I mean, really? I don't know where the fuck I'm going. Enter the survival horror. And by the way, folks, for those of you who are new to the series, we'll try to restrain ourselves. And um, if we do spoil something, I do apologize Western, in advance. Because we're so used to the series. We don't know where Barry is, is my seeing eye man. <laughs> <laughs> what is this place? I will know it's actually. Not this game is, is available on PS3, sure. uh, 360, PS4, hey, Xbox One, and PC. Where's Chris? Jill, no. Also, you don't the PS3 and 360 there. versions run at uh, 30 frames but per second, as do the PS4 and Xbox what One versions. That? But the PC Chris? version runs at 60 frames per second. No. Also, Jill, PS3 and 360 are at 720p, everything else is I'm 1080. With her. And if all else fails, and I you can also play it on the Wii, 
All right. Or you could also I'll play the GameCube version, which I happen to Stay have sharp. that one. I still have my GameCube copy, but I want to do this one. Because it looks prettier, and generally it's just easier to have some cleaned up, you know, graphics, and it's a lot easier to play with a hapage. Yep. I, I must say, I actually do like I the upscaled uh, graphical detail in um, HD, HD Remaster, actually. Yeah, it's really well done. You know, I, I'll give Capcom shit, but I'll give credit. I think you'd better Where take a look is at this. this. Mm, well, is frame rate. This is excellent. Yeah, frame rate notwithstanding, but then again, I don't give a damn wow. about that. Oh, great. The the frame rate's Jill. fine. Eh. I'll, I'll be at, you, you know, the transitions are a little off-putting, but still, it's pretty good. It's not but yeah, um, actually, there, I wouldn't say as much. This version of the game actually has an alternate control setup. Hit select. And then hit... Oh, I'm sorry, he's talking to his brother. But yeah, this game has an alternate control scheme, actually. I'll get more into details on that when we actually get to um, our proper investigation of this place. But first... Let's run to uh, the first of many friends. Uh, I hope I'm not bothering you. I'm having a kind of sandwich. Go uh, away. Uh, did you see that? His eye moved right at us. <laughs> that guy freaked me out, actually. His eye was actually moving. What is it? Look out! It's a monster! <laughs> this guy's crazy! I actually didn't want to note something. In terms of the GameCube version, there tends to be slight uh, delays in regards to transitioning between um, cutscene shots. What is this thing? Not here, though. I found Kenneth killed by this thing. Let's report this to Wesker. Yeah, this, is, this is one thing I wanted to know about this game compared to the GameCube one. Mm hmm. I mean, it took me a while to notice it, but yeah. Oh, great. Hey, look, I... Yeah, that zombie. Yeah, that, that zombie played raccoon. Possum, even. Possum, yes. In fact, another thing about this game is that some of the zombies are Wesker! actually slightly more intelligent than you give them credit for because they will actually, Jill, some of them will for? actually open doors. Good idea. Yep. Phew. But it can surprise you when you're in the middle of, you know, walking towards the door and all suddenly a zombie busts it open. You're like, ah, fuck! Mm -hmm. Then you get grabbed and you take damage. Another new thing about this game is the fact that it actually has a new gameplay mechanic. Defense items. More on that later. Very. Something that should no, probably nothing. make a return in some What's shape or form, I would here? like to see. I can't figure it out. Maybe. Same here. I should also and note, Wesker. with this game, There's this marks the beginning of what I call my Resident Evil we'll Marathon. Yes, I'm going to actually cover the guys. entire main series once okay, again. Then. I'll try the door on the other side. From this uh, game all the way to game. Revelations 2. We could easily get lost. Albeit, we'll considering floor. how many okay. games that Adam's got to go through, it's going to be a while it's before 2 even comes out, so you don't worry, folks. Actually, no, it comes out this uh, month, or at least next month. Hey, lockpick! Well, it's this month, Thanks. about the end of I the month in the early, Listen, and I probably happens. won't be able to play it till April because of, Got it? well, okay. space and all that. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Uh, yeah, more or less, compared to the original game, the pacing of this one is a little slower, actually. That, and the fact that a lot of items were moved around, puzzle solutions were somewhat changed, even, even some puzzles themselves were different. And if you're wondering how long this game takes compared to original, well, if it if my it if my sorry, what? if my speed run history is correct, it's generally an extra hour too long. Mm, yeah, roughly an hour to hour and a half. Yeah. Where the original game can be beat in about an hour and a half or so. Albeit, uh, I did a, an off-screen, uh, off-camera knife run of this game. Very easy, mind you. Yeah, actually, this this version actually adds a very easy difficulty. And the thing is, I managed to pull off under three hours with with with, with a knife. No defense items, no fuel canteen, no stomping on zombie heads. A lot of verb usage, I imagine. 
A lot of ink ribbon usage, yeah. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Defense items. Pretty much, if you have these items, you can avoid getting uh, heavily damaged by enemies. That is, if you're facing them. If they're attacking from behind, they won't work. Now, there are two ways to use defense items. Either automatically or it, with manual mode. With manual mode, you must press L2. Anyway, let's head back. And it's time for the uh, first demonstration of uh, the defense mechanic. Yep. Uh, yeah, the first defense item we get is a dagger. And both Chris and Jill can use these. Oddly enough, in the Brother Chronicles, that's Chris's uh, counterattack. He uses a, a defense dagger. And no, I will be taking my time in Jill's story, and I'll be reading as many of the files as I can find. I think I found all of them. Except for one. I found the other last one in Chris's story. So that makes up for that in All's Well That Ends Well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Pretty much, uh... Oh, yeah. Also, unlike the original, uh, Jill has to use all four keys this time. Which game did you put in? Mm. Anyway, now I can get into details regarding controls. Controls are, again, there, there, there's an alternate control setup in this game. However, you can play with the original controls. Well, these uh, original style controls. Uh, here is what I believe are the controls for the alternate setup. You, you can actually use the left analog stick, or L3, to actually move about in analog form. By that, I mean you can actually move without it being a, controlling like a tank. Oh, but you can still do that as well. It's just my preferred way of controlling um, classic RE games. Mm -hmm. Now, R3, however, can be used to do quick turns. Now, in terms of attacking and stuff, Triangle brings up the menu. Uh, aiming uh, R1 to aim. Cir R1 plus circle to reload your current gun. Or cancel. Uh, square button to run. And X button to, to examine. Or, or actually use... Uh, Use certain items. Whoa! Also, oh, by the way, uh. Oh, wait, no, no. R1's to fire, rather. L1's to aim, I believe. Yes. It's basically very much like uh, Revelations and Resident Evil 6's kind of default control. Mm -hmm. oh, but also, uh, you can use. If you have it on manual mode, L2 to use defense items, R2 to use the map. <laughs> that, was, that was close. But yeah. Oh. We dodge him. Mm hmm. Oh, and of course, obviously, start button to bring up options menu. I do that a couple times because I'm still getting used to the controls. Because the controls themselves, it's enough to feel like I'm playing a somewhat different, ver uh, somewhat different game. Yeah, actually, I, oh, by the way, in terms of aiming, uh, if you press L2 while aiming, you, get, you can actually uh, change targets. I didn't know that actually. So thus, uh, I, I, I'll, I played the entire game without even knowing that. But I, but I still got through it just fine. Yeah, uh, if I recall correctly, we sat through the footage here, and you were doing just fine. Yeah, I actually, we actually, we, he and I actually sat through all Jill's story. And yeah, here's the options menu. Of course. And I'm gonna have the knife because, well, I want to get past this guy. I should also note if you have the knife equipped or no weapon equipped, you can run faster. Which is generally a, uh, which is generally something that most speedrunners generally do, mm. because it gives them an extra two frames to work with, and well, yeah. any frames that you get to save you on time. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'm still amazed I managed to pull off a knife run. Two hours. Oh, that guy is just not interested in you. No, it's because when, when zombies are on stairs, they can't bite you. Because they're too busy throwing up like idiots. Yep. I didn't know that zombies suffered from that bad vertigo. Well, now you know. And by the and way, knowing's half the battle. Yeah. And by the way, when you come back here later on, the zombies will vanish, so don't need to worry about that. And that zombie there is just most of the time he just kind of sits there and just. He is guarding a pack of shotgun shells, though. Oh. Albeit we do not have a shotgun, do we? Not yet. I was just aiming. And now here's one of the other changes from the original game to Rebirth. Yeah, we're gonna call it Rebirth just for the... Just for, um... It, it's a lot better than saying Resident Evil GameCube version. Or whatever. 
or HD Remaster, HD 1080 Turbo Championship Edition. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that oddly, I could honestly see Capcom doing that. They, they would do it if they could get away with it. Uh, Book of Curses. The four masks. A mask that speaks no evil, smells no evil, sees no evil. A mask that cannot speak, smell, or see evil. When all four fall into place, evil will awaken. Huh. Oddly, that kind of reminds me of the mask from Shadow Hearts again. Oh, what's this? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. I should know. Uh, obviously, up there is gonna be a boss fight, and if, we, if you're trying to fight this guy with a ball, with a knife, it's painful, especially if you're not using defense items. Mm. I had to go through that on my knife only run. Look, that guy's just standing there. He's just no, like, don't, he's worry, like... Don't, don't worry about it. He'll actually vanish later on. So that way you can grab the shotgun shells then. Well, I think it, he vanishes for two reasons, but of course, that will happen later. Hmm. Anyway, now that we have the sword key, we can actually progress into here. And by the way, don't open the front door, otherwise, otherwise you'll be attacked by um, a dog. Unlike the original game, where it just showed you a really bad uh, cutscene of the dog, you know, trying to break in, this game the dog will actually get in and then try to kill you. Mm -hmm. Also, speed of which, pistol shots this time around will not immediately stun them. They'll just keep on, they'll just flinch, but they'll keep on coming. Yeah, oddly in the original game, pistol shots tended to be more effective against dogs than shotguns. I, I, I found that kind of weird. Speaking of which, the window didn't break this time. Huh. However, if you come back here the, the opposite way, by that I mean the door at the end of the hall, they will break through. Ooh. Yeah. Ominous thunder. Yep. And here's um, another hangar magazine underneath here. Oh, by the way, you want to pay attention in regards to the map, actually, because the rooms are colored differently depending on whether or not you got all the items in that one room. Mm -hmm. If you got, if you do not have all the items, it'll be colored well, reddish orange or so. If you actually did get all the items, well, it'll be colored uh, differently. Anyway, for those of you who are new to the game and or new to the series as a whole. Might as well get into the character differences. Jill pretty much has less health than Chris, but she can carry more items. She also has uh, access to a, a much better weapon compared to what Chris can use. And she also has lockpick. Mm-hmm. Which skips the whole keys gimmick that Chris ends up with. Yeah. However, whether or not that actually makes her better to use than Chris, well, it depends, really. Because... She, because if she wants to actually incinerate um, zombies, she would have to have both a fuel canteen and a lighter in her inventory. Whereas Chris only needs to have the lighter as his uh, personal item and the fuel canteen in only one item slot. Chris also has a higher chance for critical hits. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, you, you want to make sure you, you uh, either incinerate zombies that you kill or decapitate them. Otherwise, they will you know, revive. In turn, into Crimson Heads. They are bad news, trust me. Crimson Heads are an incredible threat. You <gasps> want to see how really dangerous they are? Play Umbrella Chronicles. Hell yeah. They're fucking assholes. Uh... Unfortunately, Jill manages to deal with this zombie via the cutscene. <laughs> Unfortunately, she's a little grossed out by the zombie, interact alone, and like anyone else. Yeah. Well, she's doing the sensible thing, actually, because, well, you know, most people would react that way. Yeah. But, but yeah, like I said before, for those of you who are new to this series, we'll try to restrain ourselves. But but forgive us if we actually do mention things that are obviously spoilers. We apologize in advance. In in the original game, Jill tended to be the most favored one of the bunch. Mm. And 
oddly, if anything, she's generally the person that you should probably start your game as first. Yeah, that's what I did, actually. I, yeah, I started as Jill first, and then as Chris. The, though this game actually balances Chris's style more, so Chris doesn't get left out in the cold. Yeah, and we got the shotgun. I believe it's uh, Winchester as opposed to Remington ME70. And it's in our first ink ribbon, too. Obviously, ink ribbons are used to save the game. Yeah, just like for the next uh, four games or so. Mm hmm. Huh? Zero, two, three, Code Veronica. Yeah, uh oh. Yeah, it's a trap! Oh no, we're going all Indian Jones in this. Rage time for Mobius. Not really. This mansion is. Oh, built God. like this. What do yep. I do now? On purpose. Wesker! Barry! Help! And luckily enough, he was right Jill. there. You in there? Barry? Get me out of here! The door's jammed! Oh dear. Stand back! That's actually dangerous, you know, Try shooting a doorknob at close range. Grab my hand! Because what was a bullet what was a bullet ricocheted? I think yeah, yeah, you got a point. He could just kicked it down. But for a rule of cool, he does it anyway. And then again, he does have kind of a a very high-powered weapon, so... Yeah. That was a close one. A second late, he would have fit nicely into a sandwich. No kidding. Really? And obviously, really? in the original version, that well, Barry, scene had one of the most gnarmy lines really ever. Other clues? I'm glad Jill now, sandwich. why are you here? You, the I master of unlocking. I to check. Should take it with you. Anyway, we should get back to searching for Wesker. And Though, Chris. to be fair, the acting in this game is Thanks, a fair Barry. improvement over, of course, the original game, but it's still B movie. Mm, oh well, at least they're a bit more. These are more serious in this one. I, I would say it's more of, I, I guess, in a way they in the original game they were going with um, '90s B movie, where in this game it's. The Zero's B movie? Maybe. I'll be. I gotta say, the most of the people in this game act better than most of the people in the sci-fi original shit. <laughs> no kidding. Anyway, um, I should also know certain events in the game will change depending on how you progress through. For example, uh, Barry actually probably will not appear if you actually get uh, the armor key. And oh, speaking of which, in regards to getting a grenade launcher in this game. Uh, the, the scene we we get it, it changes depending on how you uh, progress after you got the sword key. Oh? Pretty much, if you did not go the way I went, and decided to get the armor key the, another way, then, ow. Then when, ah. then when you actually go get the grenade launcher, Barry will show up in that one, in that same room. Yeah. So yeah, obviously, um, certain events will change depending on your, what happens throughout the game. And of course, this game has its share of multiple endings. Though, at least uh, compared to the original game, it's a lot easier to do. Yeah, it's a lot easier to find out what ending you're gonna get because, well, obviously, if any, if I, if your uh, supporting character ever dies in in this run, you're headed for the bad ending. Or the, well, uh, until the final battle, that is. Special instructions for disposal of dead bodies. Yes, they may appear to be dead, but in fact they're able to come back to life. But yeah, there are two ways that you prevent them from becoming crimson heads. Yeah, the incineration or destruction of the head. Best weapon to use for destruction of the head? Shotguns. However, unlike the original, headshots are not uh, guaranteed. Yes, which is a uh, twin waterfalls of sadness for me. However, it's still manageable. Ooh, a lantern light on top of the supplies. The warm light makes you relax. And something I noticed while recording this, apparently, uh, Gydax physics. <laughs> Why is it I always see the noisy things out of nowhere? You've been with me too long, man. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, we've known each other for, what, eight years? Seven, well, seven going in eight years. Shit. 
Well, then again, that's, uh, that's an example of us being Fire Force friends, you know. Sure, we bicker a lot, but then again, we both know in the end we don't really mean any harm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, the classic save theme. I, I still kind of prefer the original game's theme. Yeah, same here. I'll, I'll be, um, I believe uh, when they actually did a, a collection of tracks in the, the Biohazard uh, soundbox thing, they actually had a different version of the save theme. It sounds more similar to the original. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, shit! Well, this is, what, this is my strategy. Try to group them together and then burn them. Uh-oh. And did I also mention that unlike, say, the original game, they're quite resilient. And they can climb stairs, of course. Albeit, you also don't have a cutscene for that, though, either, so... Or, or rather, an animation. Come on, come on. Uh-oh. Come on. Fall down. There we right go. Right on your buddy. There we go. But now we need a lighter. Anyway, see you guys in part two. We will see you then.